In this video, we will be learning how to write electron configurations. So in year 9 to 12, you learnt about electron shells and electron arrangements. So that's the 2, 8, 8, so on arrangement. In previous years, we've learnt that electron shells are areas around the nucleus where electrons spend most of their time. We've assumed that the electrons all move around the nucleus within each shell. But in actual fact, the electrons within each shell tend to stay within certain areas. These areas where the electrons are found are called orbitals. Each shell is broken into sublevels called the S sublevel, the P sublevel, and the D sublevel, as well as the F sublevel. We only look at the first 36 elements in level 3. And these elements don't have F sublevels, so we ignore the F sublevel for now. Every sublevel has its own orbitals, and each orbital can hold two electrons. The S sublevel has one orbital called the S orbital, so it can hold a maximum of two electrons. The P sublevel has three P orbitals, so it can hold a maximum of six electrons. And the D sublevel has 5 D orbitals, so it can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. The S orbital is a sphere shape and is found around the nucleus. The first shell only has one sublevel, the S sublevel, containing the S orbital. That is why it can hold a maximum of 2 electrons only. The second shell and up also has a P sublevel as well as an S sublevel. The P sublevel contains three P orbitals, so it can hold up to six electrons in total. Therefore, the second shell can hold eight electrons in total as it has its S and P orbitals. Each orbital is arranged so that it occupies its own space around the nucleus. From the third shell and up, there is also a D sublevel. The D sublevel contains five orbitals, so it can hold a total of 10 electrons. Four of the D orbitals have the same shape, but one is slightly different. The good news is that you don't need to know the shapes of orbitals for your exam, but it can help you to understand what orbitals are when you can visualize them. You do need to know how many orbitals there are in each sublevel, and that each, sub, that each orbital holds a maximum of two electrons. When electrons fill the orbitals, they fill the lowest energy orbitals first, before filling the orbitals of a higher energy. So the 1s would be filled before the 2s, and the 2s would be filled before the 2p. The number in front of the S, P or D tells us what shell the orbital is in. So 1S is the S orbital in the first shell and 2S is the S orbital in the second shell. When electrons are filling the orbitals in the same shell and same sublevel, one electron is added to each orbital first and then they double up. So if the electrons are filling up the two P orbitals, one electron would be added to each of the three orbitals before the second electron was added to each orbital. The valence electrons in the group one and two elements are found in the S orbital. The valence electrons of the groups 13 through to 18 are found in the P orbitals and the transition metals have their valence electrons in the d orbitals. When we write electron configuration at level 3, we need to include which orbital each electron is found in. An easy way to work out which orbital each electron is in is to start at the top left corner of the periodic table and work your way across and then down. We just have to pretend that helium is placed in group two of the periodic table because 
its electrons are in the s orbital. So the first two electrons of any atom are found in the s orbital of the first shell, so the 1s orbital. The next two are found in the s orbital of the second shell, so the 2s orbital. The next six, as we come across, are then found in the p orbitals of the second shell, so the 2p orbitals. And there are three orbitals, and each of them can hold two electrons, so a total of six. The next two, when we come down, are found in the 3s orbital. And that's then followed by six electrons added to the 3p orbital. So if you remember that this area here is the s orbital, so any electrons you're adding as you come across here are added to an s orbital. This area here is the p orbital, so any electrons that you're adding here are added to the p orbitals. And this area here is the d orbital. So any electrons you add from 21 to 30 are added to the d orbital. So then we come down to the fourth period. And because we only look at atoms up to atomic number 36, we don't go past the fourth row. So the next two electrons after 3p are added to the 4 s orbital. So we're still in this area, so we're in the s orbital, and it's the fourth row, so the 4s. And then this is where things get a little bit different, because we now move into the d orbitals. So there are five of these orbitals, and so they hold a total of 10 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whilst it looks like this is in the fourth row, because it's in line with the fourth row, these electrons are actually in the third shell. The D sublevel is actually 3D. So we have 10 electrons in the D orbital of the third shell. You just have to remember when you add electrons to this D sublevel that it is to the 3D orbitals. Note though that we added our 4s electrons, our two 4s electrons, before we added our 3d electrons. So even though these electrons are in the fourth shell and these are in the third, the 4s electrons actually are added before the 3d. And that's because if we go back to our previous slide, we can see that the 4s orbital is actually lower energy than the 3d orbitals. And we add each electron from the lowest energy up to the highest energy orbitals. So our final six electrons are added to the 4p orbitals. Again, it's only this d sublevel that's in the third shell. The s orbital and the p orbitals either side of it are still in the fourth shell. So we have 4s2, 3d10, and 4p6. So 4s2, there's two electrons in the fourth shell s orbital, 3d10, 10 electrons in the third shell d orbital, 4p6, six electrons in the fourth shell p orbital. In the next lesson, we will look at how to write electron configurations for atoms and ions, as well as the two that don't quite follow the rules. If you want to be notified when lessons are released, then make sure you hit that subscribe button.